Hey guys, this is Shelby with My Wheel Life um, and my first video of what I hope is many, many more to come. When I started this page, I really was looking for an outlet for myself. When I became a paraplegic, I started to notice a lot of things that people with disabilities deal with that other people really don't notice and things that I never noticed when I was an able-bodied person. So My Wheel Life was really just a way for me to kind of reach out, educate, answer questions, answer those, you know, really raw and edgy questions that people don't want to ask. Um, I always tell everybody I meet, you can ask me anything, I will answer it, I don't get embarrassed, this is my life, um, and I'm learning how to love it, and that's kind of what my real life is all about. Um, it's about me letting you come along as I learn to love my new life. So um, a couple days ago, I put a post out that said we would be making a video and asked for any questions that you guys may have. And I got quite a few responses and most of them are very, very good responses. Okay, so the first question, how are you adjusting to being a wife and mom post-injury? Um, it's incredibly difficult. Being a mom is something I've always loved to do. I love my kids. You know, I tell everybody my kids are crazy, but they're mine, they're my kids. Um, I, I do find myself doubting myself a lot, having a little bit more of an insecurity when it comes to the kids. You know, I have a lot of guilt about being gone um, from the time of the accident until I came home. I was gone about seven weeks. I only saw them twice in that matter of time. And in fact, one of them I didn't get to see at all, um, which is my, you know, my stepson Maddox. I'm his sassy and he's my Maddox and that was really hard. Um, being a wife, is easy. Martin makes that super easy for me. He's always made it easy. He's amazing. I tell everybody all the time, you know, he is just such a good guy. He is so wonderful and he loves me and loves on me and makes sure to do whatever we have to do to know that, you know, I'm going to be okay. Our family's going to be okay. And he is just that great, you know, provider of comfort. So, um, you know, adjusting to being a wife hasn't been very difficult. You know, um, like I said, he's made that very easy and any obstacle that we've come upon, we've been able to overcome together. The next question that I got was, what is the hardest question that you've had to answer so far from your kids? Um, so my kids are one, three, five, and seven. Um, my one and three year old, if you really think about it in all reality, will probably never remember a time that I walked. And that's hard. Um, you know, if I really sit here and think about it, I'll get upset, so I don't want to. But um, my five year old, Colton, he asks all the normal questions, you know, like, why don't your legs work? Well, can you do this? Can you do a backflip? Can you karate kick? You know, all those normal boy, five-year-old questions. Um, but he's pretty content in his heart that, you know, my mommy has a wheelchair now and she's just different and that's okay. Um, the hardest question that I've had to answer came from Riley, um, our daughter. She's seven and she and I have always been very close. Um, and she, this really kind of just shook her world and I mean, just flipped it upside down. We've really struggled with her, with the way that she's had to go through these feelings and emotions, dealing with the things that we do now and my body and being different. Um, so to answer the question, the hardest question that I've gotten is um, probably, you know, why won't you ever be able to walk again? And, you know, I've tried to explain that in a kid version as much as you can. Um, a lot of my answer with that is, you know, God has done so much in our life and this is a part of the plan for God and, you know, we live for Jesus and, you know, one day we're going to understand. We may not understand in this life, but you never know. Um, I hold out immense hope and I pray con constantly that, you know, this will not be for nothing. Um, Probably on the flip side of this question, the hardest statement I've had to deal with from the kids about this um, is, I hate your wheelchair. That, I mean, that kind of 
rocked my world a little bit when that came out of one of the kids' mouths. Um, I hate your wheelchair. That was really hard. And um, I kind of responded like a 12 year old. I just got really upset and I was like, well, I hate it too. And you know, sometimes that's just a part of the process, I guess. Um, but that's been the hardest question statement I've had to deal with from the kids. Um, hardest, the next question, the hardest adjustment for the kids. And these two questions um, are two of three questions that came from Mike on a bike. Hey Mike, hey Melody, I love you guys so much. Um, thanks for all these hard questions. Um, so hardest adjustment for the kids. Really it's been more that Martin is now doing more of the caretaker work for them as opposed to me because now that I'm home, um, I'm still learning how to figure this out. I'm still figuring my body out. I'm still figuring out how to maneuver myself around the house. We just bought a new house. Um, you know, this whole time that I've been home has really been me learning more about me and Martin learning how to be the old me and take care of the kids and do the clothes and run to school and run errands and go to the doctor. And so that's been really hard for them because I was always that person. Small things that I take for granted, or that are, I'm sorry, that are taken for granted um, that I've realized now that I am disabled. Um, getting a shower every day. Where I've been living, we were living with family while we were trying to figure out housing. Um, I have not been able to get into that bathroom to take a, an actual shower. So I've had four showers since I came home from rehab. Um, Three of them have been in, in a hotel room. I've, one night, my dad, thank you dad, rented me a hotel room and called me and told me, you know, go get a shower. Um, and actually I think it was two nights that dad that you paid for, so thank you for that. And then the third night, Martin and I went one day when we didn't have the kids and I was just like, I need a damn shower. Like I feel gross, I wanna get, I don't want a sponge bath anymore. I wanna get in the shower and sit there. Um, the fourth one was on my mama and papa's back patio using their um, hot water access. They have a like a split line hot water access to their water hose and I literally got into a pool chair butt naked and got a shower. Um, any other time that I'm bathing, it's sponge bathing. Um, I've been washing my hair in the kitchen sink literally like leaning over the kitchen sink, breaking my neck to wash my hair, um, like once or twice a week. Um, just, you know, that sucks. You guys take showers for granted, like nobody's business, I'm sorry. Um, the other thing would probably, if I had to think of another example of things that are just taken for granted, um, being able to pick your kids up. I'm still not strong enough to pick Beckham up. Um, he's about, 35 pounds, um, I, I can get him about halfway and then I really struggle. So, you know, pick your kids up, love on them. I don't care how, how big they are, how old they are. That is such a gift to be able to just pick them up and do it yourself and not have to ask for help. Um, where, thank you again, Mike on a bike. Where am I and forgiving the careless driver that hit me? Um, sometimes I tell people that I've already forgiven him and that it's kind of already done. Um, I've never seen or spoken to him. Um, he is like non-existent on social media. Believe me, I know because I have stalked him. So if, Hey, if you ever see this video, I looked for you. Um, I've tried to just, just because a part of me just wants to know like, what's up with your life? What are you doing? Like. Do you know that I'm paralyzed? Like, do you know the the seriousness of what this accident caused? So um, just in saying those things, I don't think I've fully been able to forgive him. Um, not that he doesn't deserve forgiveness. I believe that everyone deserves it, but my flesh is just really clinging on to that and I'm just having a hard time with it. So that's just something that I continue to work on. Um, and I pray about that quite a bit, just learning how to let go of him and of the thing that the things that caused this accident, um, you know, the things that put me in the chair, just learning that 
I need to just pray and try to figure that out on my own terms. So no, Mike on a bike, I have not um, fully forgiven him yet. Um, another question I got was about um, my incontinence. It was about bowel and bladder care or prep care. So my condition, paraplegia paralysis, causes me to be fully incontinent, um, I, which if you don't know what incontinent means, it means you can't control when you're going to the bathroom, you have no control over it, you can't feel it, you can't stop it, you can't hold it, nothing. So when I first got injured, they placed a permanent catheter in my urethra and I had like one of those uh, gross little pee bags that you took everywhere with you and it was gross, um, like super gross. Jackson gross like that gross um and when I went to rehab they told me that I would be able to straight cast which means that you insert a catheter you cast your urine comes out into a bag or a cup or however you do it there's all kinds of ways um and then you remove the catheter and go on about your business and four to six hours later you do it again I was taught how to do it in rehab however it is a lot harder than you think um, a woman's urethra is like literally smaller than the tip of my pinky. It is very difficult to find if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, so as of now, you know, Martin for, I mean, pretty much all the time cats me. If I need to be cathed, um, we are actually going to see a urologist to see about getting a supra pubic catheter which is basically where the urologist will go in and put like a small hole in my belly that goes down into my catheter and it'll have a, um, it's called a flip flow valve. So what'll happen is whenever, every couple hours when I need to, you know, dump my urine, um, I'll flip the valve, I'll empty it into a bag or whatever I have with me, close the valve, go on about my day. It makes it a lot easier for me. It makes it a lot easier for Martin, who as of right now is like the catheter king and he, can cast me literally anywhere. We have yet to have somewhere where he has not been successful. Um, and it'll give me a lot more freedom. So it'll, you know, to kind of give me another step in being a little bit more independent. Bow care is a totally different story. Um, so because I cannot feel when I have to poop, um, I don't know if I'm pooping. I can't, I have no sensation. Um, in rehab, we learned about a bowel program. So it's basically where you're training your body to only have a bowel movement during certain times of the day. So it took us a long time to get this program to work. Like it took, we bought these crazy suppositories that were like, they were called the magic bullet. And oh my God, y'all, if you need a cleanse, call me. I have like 50 magic bullets left. I will give them to you. It's horrible. Um, we did all kinds of crazy stuff. We were doing it every two days, every three days, three times a day. We could not get it right. Finally, probably the middle of November, we decided we were going to start doing it just every time I woke up in the morning before we would leave the house. We started doing that and I mean, it just kicked off, you know, um, my bowel prep, my bowel program, Martin helps me do that. Um, I have yet to be able to be in a bathroom where I can sit on the toilet just because I don't have accessibility. As soon as the, our house is done being renovated, that will change and, it, and I will do a whole video on when it changes and explain to y'all how that happens if you want one. But basically, um, whenever I, we do my bowel program, I turn on my side and Martin um, digital stimulates my rectum and you know we wait and see if I have a bowel movement and if I do, he cleans me up. If I don't, we get up, we go on about our day. Um, you know, things, it, you think, it, when you think about it and you, you kind of think about, you know, like, that's crazy. I can't believe he does that. Um, you know, when you are in a marriage, if you're not in a marriage, you're not gonna understand. When you're in a marriage and you make a commitment with someone that is so extreme it's to this level of complete confidence i have confidence that you're gonna i'm confident you're gonna show up for me i'm confident you're gonna be there when i need you um it just 
changes you. And Martin will tell you, he'll say, I never in my life thought that I would be able to do that to someone. And now he's like, I, I love to be able to help you if I can. I want to do that for you. I don't want anybody else. I don't want your mom to help. I don't want anybody's help. I just want to take care of you and do it whatever we have to do. So I'm very blessed um, to have him because, you know, there when we were in rehab, we were told there are a lot of people who have spouses that just kind of walk out of there and they're like, I can't do this. Um, so I'm very, very blessed for that. Okay, and then the next question I got was, is it hard to lay with Martin and not be able to attack him? Um, it's not hard to lay with Martin just because I can't, you know, move, you know, from like breast lying down. You know, it does take a little bit more situating if we want to cuddle or snuggle or be close. Um, but he's always happy to help me with that, you know, and um, I can still attack him just Paralysis doesn't mean you can't have sex with people. It's, you know, we were very, very happy in our marriage. <laughs> Once you're more independent, can you stay home alone? Yes, um, I can stay home alone now if it's like not very long, just because I'm limited in what I can and can't do. Um, I can't calf myself and Martin is, you know, kind of a crazy guy and he doesn't like me to be alone anyway, um, just because he's just, that kind of guy so um, eventually I will be able to just be alone do my own thing get the kids up get them out the door once I'm more independent I'm working really hard on that um, I'm really excited about our house being renovated hoping that that's gonna you know give me kind of a another level of independence where I'm gonna have my own place be situated and be able to do the things I need to do and have that have that independence okay another question um, do you have periods so since my accident, I have not had one period, not at all. Um, they don't know why. You know, the doctors have told me multiple times, you know, when your body experiences severe trauma, that sometimes it just kind of shocks the system, you know, and that eventually they will come back. However, I am in a couple support groups on Facebook for SCI survivors, and I've kind of asked them and yeah, I've had some women come back and say like, oh, it took a year. And then I have this one lady came back and she was like, I've never gotten one ever again. So I don't know. I'm enjoying it while it lasts because that is awesome to not have to deal with. And that just makes my life a heck of a lot easier and definitely makes Martin's life a heck of a lot easier. Do you have a regular bed? Um, we have a, um, a Tempur-Pedic something it's like the like mac daddy bed okay it even has like massage settings where it like vibrates at three different tones or levels and you can like press zero gravity and like i got this idea from my dad because i went and visited my dad in december and he had the mac daddy bed and i was like i gotta have that um i have a pressure uh, relieving mattress pressure sores are something that sci patients deal with a lot because you know um our blood flow is not that great if we're sitting in long, uh, sitting for long periods of time, sitting in the same position, if we have heavy objects sitting in our laps, things like that, it can cause a pressure sore, which is literally like a bruise and it will just eat itself into your skin. I mean, I've seen pictures of people who their skin has just like disappeared. So um, I have a really great mattress, really, really great mattress to kind of help keep me from that. Okay, so this wasn't really a question, but this was kind of a suggestion, something I wanted to talk about because a lot of people have said it. Um, someone should make a surgery with a target that gives you sensations where you, where you have them whenever the target is hit. So I think what this person was trying to explain um, is actually a procedure where you can have little electrodes gone, you can have the surgeons go in and they'll actually put them along your spine and they're electronic stimulators. And what they do is they send electric currents and stimulate the nerves and the muscles and all of that stuff that connects into your spine, trying to see if you can get any kind of um, receptor back, seeing if like, you know, those nerves that are down in my legs, if I can get a spasm out of that from my muscle or anything. Um, some of the studies I've seen about them have been super successful. I don't know if that's something that I would ever really look into. Um, 
we have looked into stem cell research. We have looked into exoskeleton suits. Um, we've also looked into, Martin wrote up the other day, a full spinal transplant, which I was like, oh no, not happened. Like that just stresses me out to think about. But um, stem cells are a really big topic in my house um, and between me and my parents right now, just trying to figure out the best thing you know, to see if there is a chance that through medicine I'm able to walk again. Um, let me just cliff note here and tell you that if I'm ever given the ability to walk again, regardless of the medicine used, it will be by the will of God. And I believe that wholeheartedly, um, wholeheartedly. I'll argue with you about it all day. I don't care. You're welcome to come and fight with me about it. I believe that no matter what happens, no matter what causes it, if I ever in my lifetime walk again, it will be by the will of God. Um, so, you know, I just, I just pray that God's will be done and we just kind of hold on to that in our heart that, you know, we can do all things through Christ and that being paralyzed doesn't mean my life is over. It doesn't mean that um, I can't be a good mom, a good wife. It doesn't mean that I can't be sexy and pretty and funny and, um, it doesn't mean that I can't have a job or I can't have a career or I can't finish school. Being a paraplegic does not mean that I am any less of a human being than anyone else on the earth. Um, if anything, it gives me a greater purpose. It gives me something to really strive towards. And, you know, on my good days, I really hang on to that. And on the bad days, when I kind of just say bleep paralysis and I'm not getting out of the bed and I don't want to, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm too tired. I'm, I'm too angry. Um, it, it's always God that pulls me back out of that. And it's always running where I know that I'm accepted and running into open arms. Um, and the support of my husband and my kids and my family and the support of the people that love me and my inner circle. So, you know, I really believe that my will life is going to give you guys a great insight into what I do. Um, if you don't know me personally, I am a hot mess. I'm a crazy person. People say that all the time. I'm serious. Um, I, you know, there's, I never met a stranger. I can talk to anybody. So I would love to meet and talk to you. I'd love to hear your story. Um, let me know if I can pray for you. If there's anything that I can do, you know, to be a positive image in your life, I would love to do it. And I hope you guys keep following me on my wheel life and I'll see you next time.